Welcome to Engine Markets training session. So I hope my voice uh, is audible to every one of you and my screen is visible. And um, meanwhile, once everybody has joined in, we will talk about the topics we are going to discuss uh, today. So the topics we are going to have is rolling analysis. So the thing is that, you know, the return is uh, based on the rolling returns and based on the rolling vol volatility, how we are going to choose multiple funds and how we are going to assess singular mutual funds and stocks. And then we will look into some applications of rolling based on the parameters of mutual funds and stocks. And then we will be having Q&A sessions where we can address some of your queries and feedback all together. So I hope uh, you know everybody has joined in. So let's start ahead. Uh, I'm just going to share my screen up. Let give me give us a moment. Yeah, so as you can see, my terminal has been opened up. You can see the engine market uh, portal. So we will directly head up into the fund section where we will be uh, you know looking into some screener and then we will talk about the compare section so basically to select multiple funds uh, you know what we do initially is we select certain categories altogether let's say we select mid cap funds or maybe large cap funds then we can uh, actually uh, you know cancel this up and uh, select multiple mutual funds based on this you know add to compare button so you know you can use multiple parameters here to actually sort in and come up with some mutual funds uh, with your own pre selected uh, you know compare uh, list and i'm just going to show you the compare section where you can actually add in the fund from the saved list so i will just add in the large cap fund as of now in into the list and we will talk about a multiple uh, mutual funds uh, into the rolling analysis so i hope my uh, you know voice is audible to every one of you if it isn't uh, please write me in the chat box and i will definitely look into it so here in the main list you can see that you know large cap funds has been loaded so by the way, the best way is that whenever you add in the funds into the compare list, you can save the list to save your time. So, you know, whenever I want to analyze any certain categories, I'm just saving my list here. So the next step is to actually look into the rolling analysis. So what do we do in rolling analysis? So rolling analysis is one set of analysis, which is more, you know, which has more advantages uh, against the CAGR. What you can do here is you can have your own start date and end date and a start date is considered as a minimum common period to talk about minimum common period. All you have to do is check into the main list and you can see the minimum age in the list is Canada Rebecca blue chip equity fund, which is 11.81 age as in as in years. So you can check it here, out here and you will have a start date of 20th August 2010. Similarly, what you can do here is you can have a rolling window. So now we calculate rolling analysis on daily basis. So what you can do here is you can choose in any particular date. As of now, in a defaulted manner, we have chosen as 260 days as a one year. So that is a working period in a year. You, if you want to take it uh, in, in a two year format or a three year format, all you have to do is type in 520, which is a multiple of, you know, 260. So all you have to do, you know, run it. And yes, you will get the data based on the 520 ruling window. Now here we are going to choose a methodology or as absolute and simple returns. I will explain what is the difference between the simple returns and point to point, but we are going to initially look into it and we are going to come up with some, you know, analysis based on these parameters. Let's go ahead. Let's check it out for 260 as a one year period. So what does this signify? This signifies that if we start our investment from the start of 20th August, 2010 till the end date of 26th May, 2022, what is what is going to be my every year daily return in this particular format so that is a every single data point we, which you look into let's say 21st may 20, 2018 which is 18.87% it signifies that that is the sum of the previous 260 days daily returns so every single day act, every single data point here actually signifies a one year return 
Now in this format, if you see the entire data set, you can actually see that which particular fund can backtest the best average. And here it, it shows you Mirai Asset Blue Chip uh, Equity. And then you can also see, you know, the volatility of the entire data set, the highs and the lows. So what does that signify? That we have gone for this particular fund as high as 67.47%. And similarly, as low as negative 34.90%. So I have gotten, a, you know, a, a, a chat box by Pankaj Parmasar. Yeah, I will show you, you know, how do we actually analyze for one singular fund so we can look into those uh, particular nitty gritties of rolling analysis uh, based on the average till the positive tilt. So let's go ahead. So let's let's say we are considering a strategy where we are looking for such funds which are low volatile but giving us a good average so that we can suggest these particular mutual funds to our client. So what do we do? We can initially look into the funds which are having a very good average but we can also sort in in a way that we can see these are the funds which are having low volatility altogether. And what does this volatility signifies that this entire data set in this chart, how volatile is this chart? If it is truly volatile, you can see these are the funds which are truly very volatile, like Nippon India large cap fund. Similarly, you can also see that, you know, the more the volatility is, the higher the, you know, highs and the higher the range would be. As an example, you can see the highest range is actually back tested by HDFC, Franklin and Nippon. Why? Because these are the quite volatile fund altogether. And that doesn't mean that, you know, if they are highly volatile, they can give you a good average because the back test for every single data point should be into a positive uh, tilt as well. So what does this range and positive tilt signify? This range is the difference between the absolute value of high and the low. So that is what it means. You, if you calculate, if you, if you actually make a difference between these two data points, you will definitely find a range. So the higher the range, the more the volatile is the asset altogether. Similarly, the positive tilt is actually the ratio between the two values of highs, absolute values of highs and lows. And the higher the positive tilt, the better the you know distribution of those data points into the positive domain to show you in this you know in a graphical in a in a uh, graphical tabular format what we can do is we can actually see how the positive tilt is actually going on how do we work on positive tilt what do we do here is that we can type in negative 100 as our most negative data point in the ruling analysis and we can keep it as zero as our you know a ballpark figure where we will, you know, see that, you know, the lower than zero, it's going to be into a negative domain and the higher than zero, then it's going to be in a positive domain. So what we are going to do here is we are going to type in, let's say, uh, you know, positive hundred as our highest cap here. So in the distribution for a 260 day ruling returns, you can see that between zero to negative hundred, we are back testing very highly in HDFC top 100. And as you can see, accordingly in HDFC top 100, IDFC. So these are the funds which are actually having a frequency of 23% between this negative domain. And as well as if you see in the positive domain from zero to hundred, and as you can see, we have gone as high as, you know, 70 to 80%. You can definitely see the funds like Axis Blue Chip, Canara Rebecco, and, you know, Kotak Blue Chip, and Mirai Asset, which are more towards positive, uh, you know, positive distribution. So in the positive interval, if you actually see the positive tilt, these are the funds, Canada Rebecco, Axis, Blue Chip and Kotak Blue Chip. And similarly, uh, you can take a call if as to which fund is appropriate based on the volatility, based on the, you know, average and based on the range. Because if you're choosing such a fund, which is very volatile, which is having a very high range, but a very low positive tilt, you might be having a very, uh, you know, negative, uh, you know, losses for a one year period. And this actually is a one year period loss. So, uh, you know, to actually manage the risk for the client, we can use these parameters. 
to come up with the proper suggestions this is this is what you can do even for a lump sum and a sip strategy you know uh, there is a notion here that uh, the higher is the range the better it is in the you know sip format but you should also look for uh, the funds which are back testing more towards positive uh, you know domain positive uh, intervals because uh, the more positive it is the better xirr it might generate so you know that's it for the you know that's it for the entire comparisons of the rolling returns between the funds now you know what does uh, what is the difference between simple returns and point to point so between simple returns and point to point uh, you know uh, i have already told you what is simple returns if we take any data point let's say 15th you know let's say 8th july 20 2019 you can see that it's 15.23% so for a one year period from the previous sum of the daily returns we are getting you know 15.23% and every single data point signifies that you can run through every single data point for any fund now let's say uh, we take into account point to point now what does to point to point does is it takes into account not the daily returns but the price series of that asset and only the you know start and the end date of that particular 260 days period now this the comparison between these two is quite uh, you know quite minimal but the you know in point to point there is a compounding effect and due to the compounding effect you will see many figures to be more skewed due to the you know if if the price momentum is too high for such assets so you know the uh, uh, the actual way of comparing any single mutual funds in rolling analysis a better way is actually a simple returns altogether and you can also you know the absolute keeps the you know the window as absolute if you keep it to 65 let's say so for a 265 uh, you know day period it will show you absolute uh, you know returns in the particular format so as you can see these are the average based on the absolute i've chosen so this is the absolute number i've chosen but what if i keep it as you know 520 520 will show you for a two years period the average the volatility the highs the lows and the positive tilt will change and you can definitely see these are the numbers which have changed and now these are actually uh, telling us that these are actually some of the previous 520 days uh, simple returns and if we keep it as annualized so any data point whatever whatever rolling window you have chosen will become annualized even if i keep it 20 it will annualize the same so you can definitely see that for a 20 in an absolute format you will see a different average and uh, and if i make it absolute you will see the average will change and will show you a different figure altogether so now if I, if you are investing for a 20 day period basically uh, you are going to get the highest average for mirai asset now this is not in a this is not appropriate you know no one invest in mutual fund for 20 days period but let's say if you do for a 5 year period right so you can type in 1300 and run it so that's how you can actually see which fund is actually having the highest average and in the in the in, in the positive domain if you can see from 0 to 100 there are couple of funds which are into positive there is no negative going on in there so and you can see these are the you know there is hsbc hsbc large cap equity fund there is icici prudential blue chip there is canara rebecco so you can definitely see some you know numbers going on here and uh, that is how this works out uh, based on this you know uh, distribution analysis and let's say uh, we are trying to compare stocks as well we have chosen certain mutual mutual funds now let's say we are adding some stock and now we have released a new function where you can add a stock here from here so you know i'm just removing this from the list to show you how to add a stock all you have to do is just type in you know avenue supermart and you can definitely see that stock has been added let's say we are adding the couple of you know list of the stock so i've already saved a list here and i'm just going to load that particular list and now we are, we can analyze rolling analysis based on the rolling return and the rolling volatility all together so here you can see that these are the you know uh, stocks which i have added and you can see the entire data set which is updated here
So these are the return columns. There is a relative column and there is a holdings column as well. Holdings columns will not be appropriate for a stock as it is not a mutual fund altogether. And if we are trying to compare stocks based on the rolling analysis, we will get quite an insightful data because a CAGR might not give you a bit of a, you know, a good analysis. Let's say we are investing in Bajaj finance. CAGR is telling you that it's 53.50%. But if you go for rolling analysis, you will get a, you know, a very different insightful data. Let's say we consider a, you know, a fact that we are going to invest for every single stock for a 260 days period. So, you know, which stock will actually give me the best average. Now this, you can see that Bajaj finance is actually having a very good average based on the you know average we have chosen, but what is uh, the volatility? The volatility, the highest volatile stock is actually Tata steel. So if I'm making an equity portfolio for myself or, you know, for my client, I would choose, uh, you know, if I'm a conservative uh, in a conservative way, I would choose such a stock which can actually give me a better, you know, uh, a better average based on the lower volatility so that I do not have to guess the cycle of the stock, you know, whether it is going up or going down, I just have to see, you know, how lesser volatile it is so that I can actually get us uh, an average, which is suitable for my portfolio. And you can do the same thing, which you have done for the mutual funds, which I've shown you before for the stocks as well. And as an example, let's consider a, a high, which is like 200, right? In a, in a, in a distribution. Now here you can definitely see that these stocks, some of these stocks are going as low as negative 89.06% for a one year period. And this is very volatile because you can see the range is too high. Even if the positive tilt is high, the range is too high and the risk you are taking for investing in such a particular stock, such as Tata Steel can be too high. So here you can take a call. If you're looking for such a stock, you know, against, uh, you know, any, uh, for any uh, portfolio, would you like to go for such a stock, which is quite volatile? And here you can definitely see that if you're investing for a one year period uh, from, uh, you know, 0% to 200%, what is the backtesting frequency? So the highest frequency is backtested by, you know, Bajaj Finance. So, you know, that is a call you can take accordingly and you can, uh, you know, definitely choose those particular stock for a portfolio. And even not that, you can actually add in funds as well. I mean, let's say we consider a fact that we are trying to compare these all stocks, which are all, you know, uh, one of the, you know, uh, 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 top stocks, which all the AMCs are investing into, we can compare it with, let's say a blue chip fund. So we can just add in a blue chip fund and try to compare it with some parameters. Maybe you can do the comparisons uh, with the rolling analysis if it is suitable for you, or, you know, one of the best uh, way to know that if, if you are taking some risk based on, uh, you know, the volatility and the average, let's say, as an example, if I am taking, uh, I am taking a considerably low risk, right? So you can see that, you know, one of the lowest risk is if I take, uh, if I take my, all the investments in mutual funds rather than going for other stocks altogether. And, uh, yeah, we can also analyze ETFs as well. You know, if we, if we can, we can just type in an ETF. Let me just add in. Yeah, so you can see these are the ETFs. We you can add in any ETF if you want. Maybe I can, you know, I, I'm just gonna add this one as of now to show you that this one ETF is has been added, Mirai Asset Nifty Mid Cap. And if I do the rolling analysis, now this is not an appropriate ETF based on the funds I've chosen. Let me check. Okay, that's a very young ETF. Let me add in another one. Just give me a moment. So accordingly, we can, uh, you know, take a call on any ETF we are actually investing into. And uh, yes, uh, uh, so the uh, we, do, we cannot add international stocks, but we can uh, via uh, custom securities and uh, any single, you know, global, uh, uh, global uh, funds as well, we can add. Let's say uh, we add in a greater China fund, right? Or, or we can say PGIM, 
GEO. Now, this is a global equity opportunities fund. We can add in as well, and we can actually compare it FOF overseas on rolling analysis based on that. And I can actually see based on this that, you know, where this PGIM GEO is actually standing in, in the rolling analysis for a one year period. So if, if I am investing uh, in any fund, right, any fund, any stock, whatever it is, whatever securities you're looking for, uh, what would be the average and where do I stand for that average? So if I am going for a good average, I can actually, you know, uh, uh, pay it with a very high risk. So I would like to choose certain assets which are suitable for, for the portfolio of the client, which can actually make sense when you are looking into it. So you can actually add in any particular fund, any particular stock uh, from domestic stocks, essentially. And if you want to add in foreign equities uh, to add in, uh, we have another way to add in uh, that is custom securities, such as, you know, I can add an Apple stock altogether and I can analyze, but this data should be updated by you, by the price series you have, and then you can actually analyze it. As an example, if you see here, uh, you can definitely see uh, these are the, you know, these are the stocks and the fund. So I'm just going to show you in a format here. So here we have access blue chip and PGM India geo fund. Whereas these are other stocks, which are more into, you know, more riskier. And you can see Bajaj finance is so riskier than, you know, having a fund. So uh, that is a very good call. If you are into, you know, if, if there are some clients uh, who are, uh, you know, interested in going to direct equity and your call is that you should go for a mutual fund, you can actually add in some stocks here you know, a couple of stocks like five to 10, which are, you know, uh, which are going to be appropriate and then actually add the appropriate funds, which you think are going to give you appropriate returns based on the risk. And you can, you know, add in as, as many uh, stocks and funds as you can to actually compare it. So that is how, you know, uh, you can compare rolling analysis based on this. And uh, we can actually look into another set of analysis is that a singular fund rolling analysis. So I'm just gonna, you know, type in a fund here, access blue chip. So this is applicable for every single fund. All you have to do is you just have to click on rolling analysis here. And once you have clicked on rolling analysis, we have defaulted one year, two year and three year. So uh, I, I'm repeating it again. Uh, we consider 260 as one year working period in a year. So uh, for a for a five year period, if you want to look for any particular fund, all you have to do is type in 1300 and run it. And this is an absolute value for every single uh, year, every single days we have given you. So uh, accordingly, uh, what do we consider here as for a 260 is that every single data point shows you the sum of the previous 260 days, uh, you know, returns. Now let's say you go for a 1300. Now, every single data point here will show you that you're going to invest, uh, you know, for a 1300 uh, days uh, period. Now, this is hypothetically, you know, if you consider rolling analysis, rolling analysis is a simulation of investments every single day for a, for that particular, you know, period. So if you, uh, you know, let's say you consider a fact that you're investing for a 1300 uh, days every single day there might be some point that you're going to get, you know, considerably low returns. And there might be some points where you're going to get considerably very high returns. So what is the range of those particular returns if you're investing for a five-year period? And how much low would you go? If, as an example, if I keep it as 780, if I default this entire thing for a one-year, two-year, and three-year period, I can definitely say that the volatility for a two-year period or for my two-year investments increases. So if I'm going to take a call, I would rather invest in a one year period or a three year period and not for a two year period, because it's more volatile uh, to, you know, for me as an investment for this particular fund. And you can actually see those insightful data based on the rolling return statistics, which is given here. Similarly for the distribution, it is the similar thing, which we have done for the multiple funds, you know, uh, before in the compare section, you can do it here in the for the singular fund so what you can do here is let's say you type in my negative 100 and let's say you type in you know uh, zero so from negative 100 to zero 
this particular fund underlies 12% of this fund, 12.414% of this fund underlies between this particular, you know, range interval. And you can change this windows accordingly. You can make it 780. You can make it 520 accordingly based on the, based on the analysis you want to make. And then we have rolling volatility analysis. Now, this is very, very interesting. We always look into returns as, as a matter of fact, whenever uh, we choose funds, we try to see that, you know, how much justification are we making based on the returns, but those returns is the, you know, is only, we can get those return by the, by the risk we actually pay. So the price we pay for those returns is the risk. So what is the ruling volatility, uh, you know, of this particular asset? So what we do here is the volatility rolls from the, you know, period of 2012. So you can see the start date here. The start date is 2011. So every single year, the volatility changes. So it's, it's not static. It is dynamic. So for dynamicity, you can actually see that how this volatility is actually changing for every single daily, you know, uh, for every single year. And here you can see the volatility shot up, you know, in an exponential format. And why this happened? Because of the COVID scenario. And you can actually, you know, backtest this for uh, certain funds which are older enough older enough to actually, um, you know, backtest some crisis scenarios as well, such as in 2016, the volatility increased again, you know, due to demonetization, whereas in 2020, it, it has shot up truly high and you can see this volatility for uh, 520 is quite different. You know, it's quite, uh, you know, uh, volatile than, uh, you know, the previous volatility. And how am I actually telling you this? is that when you look into the volatility of this particular asset, you can see that how volatile is this three graphs and you can actually compare for a one year, two year and a three year period. As a matter of fact, if you see the volatility here, the volatility of this particular graph, you know, for a one year is actually so 3.92. So this is not a normal volatility. It is a volatility of this particular volatility analysis. So that's a second level. And you can actually see that the volatility is lesser against the second year period in the three year period. So if you're taking a call for a two year period for this asset, you should rather take a call for a, you know, three year period so that you can actually have lesser risk for this particular asset. And this works out for every single, you know, mutual funds and stock as well. You type in any stock, let's say we type in Reliance Industry. So once we, you know, load in Reliance Industry, you can do the similar rolling analysis, what you can do for a fund. Now, in this case, uh, you know, these, uh, these particular assets are more volatile than a mutual funds, but you can see definitely the volatility is quite, you know, volatile because in the two year period, the volatility is, you know, sh uh, shooting up higher than the one year period. And it works out, you know, in any particular asset altogether. And similarly, you can also view this ruling uh, analysis for a portfolio as well. So let's say there is a, there is a client portfolio and you run this client portfolio. You know, what you can do is you can look into the ruling analysis here. Once you click on it, you can see uh, the 260 days, you know, average for this particular portfolio. So any client who is expecting, uh, you know, in a, in a, let's say we are investing for a three year period in, in this particular portfolio, I would ex expect 13.22%, you know, annualized return for a three year period. I cannot expect like 15 to 20% from this particular portfolio, because you can see the average is this much. I might go as high as 29.45 and I might also go as low as negative 6.05. So for a three year period, I am taking a risk, but my volatility is decreasing quite considerably. So for taking a call, but you know, for a longer run, holding this portfolio for a three year period makes sense for me because my volatility is decreasing and my average is, you know, uh, similar, similar to the one year and a two year period. And that is how we can actually, uh, you know, look into the rolling analysis. And there are other ways uh, to actually compare uh, you know, a rolling analysis, but the best way is to compare with simple returns and absolute format. You can even analyze it if you want, uh, having point to point returns, 
will have a compounding effect and the figures will change accordingly with the compounding effect because every single asset has a different set of price momentum and those prime price momentum will definitely affect the average so you can see the averages are changing you can try this out with your system uh, once again with point to point and uh, simple returns so better way to compare assets is actually simple returns so uh, that is it for the rolling analysis and that is it for the entire session uh, we can start with uh, the q and a if everybody uh, you know you can uh, shoot up your questions in the chat or verbally Yeah, so there's a question by Mr. Pankaj Parmar. Uh, Pankaj sir uh, asked for volatility, how the NAV moments are seen. Okay, uh, so you know what do we do in uh, volatility is uh, this volatility is calculated based on the rolling returns and not the NAVs. And rolling returns is calculated based on the simple return strategy where you know you uh, take a, a previous uh, a sum of the data points of any rolling window. So this is not, not based on NAV uh, in the simple returns, but if you make it point to point, then it will, you know, uh, start making sense based on the NAV. So, you know, if you, if you want to have, so based on NAVs, uh, definitely you will see the compounding effect and uh, that is it for it, uh, for the volatility. If you're talking about rolling volatility, if you're talking about volatility, uh, we have a different approach in volatility. You know, if you can look into any such asset here. So we calculate daily returns. We take, uh, as an example, we calculate daily returns of this asset and we take into the consideration uh, as uh, the volatility of, the, of those daily return and then analyze it. So you can see the annual volatility here. So that is how we analyze the volatility. So your voice is not audible. Uh, you can write us on the chat. Is there any other questions? Hi, am I audible? Yes. Uh, so I have a query uh, Query that uh, in this rolling return, can we uh, download this chart and somehow present this uh, uh, data to our client who someone wants it then? This is going to be downloaded in the Excel, but in the uh, pictorial graph format this way. Okay. You want to download this thing into the chart? Yes. yes, we can On do the it. Uh, okay, so we are actually uh, currently working on the PPT and the PDF format for every single parameters in the compare. So we are soon going to be released them. So it will be updated into the export options here. So there will be others which will be coming in. Other than that, as of now, we have a one button which will actually uh, help you to download this chart into this formats given here so you can download them into the pdf or you know other formats such as png and jpeg and you can also print this chart so all you have to do is click on this three lines and you can download them 
So other than that, if you want to, uh, you know, take a look for rolling analysis uh, for a singular fund, all you have to do is load in a fund, right? And then click on the uh, PowerPoint. So PowerPoint uh, function actually includes rolling analysis there. So whatever you choose here, let's say I choose in 1300. So dynamically, this software will actually choose to have rolling analysis um, in this format. So let me just, you know, show you the PPT as fast as possible. So the PPT is loading. Uh, once this is done, you can see this, uh, you know, uh, rolling analysis. Uh, so of this Access is currently possible for only one fund at a time, not for all. Right now. Yes, and currently it is possible for one fund, uh, but soon we will be releasing a new uh, uh, new fix for this in the compare section where you can actually, uh, you know, take a PDF of multiple funds uh, in, in a place. And similarly for the position overlap, as of now, this is not there, this function. Yes. So for okay. every single tab, so that's what I was uh, telling, hmm. uh, every okay. single tab will uh, will be uh, you will be able to download as a pdf or a powerpoint button so every single tab you can use accordingly okay thank you uh i have another question uh charts are in jamboree style can we get segregated manner so can you please elaborate how do you want it in a segregate manner uh, so that we can take your feedback accordingly There's another question. Uh, can you show rolling and rolling returns and volatility of monthly SIPs of 10 K in large cap mutual funds for 10 years period? Uh, Kishan sir, uh, this rolling analysis is, uh, is based on the daily returns and not on the monthly returns. So as an example, uh, you know, if you want to actually look for all the large cap fund and want to see which fund will actually have a good XIRR. There is actually a, a way to find that is that you load in some, you know, some funds, let's say I'm loading in uh, any fund here, any, any, any fund list here. Once I have loaded that in, I can actually uh, see which funds are having a very high range and a high volatility. Now, as you can see here in the CAGR, uh, you know, some of the funds are having a very high volatility, such as Sundaram, Aditya Birla, Franklin accordingly. I can just remove some of them. Let me remove this one. Yeah. So accordingly, you can see the CAG, uh, the uh, the standard deviation based on that. So the standard deviation of Franklin India Prima is quite high. So there is a notion that you would choose Franklin India Prima for SIP, but that is incorrect because when you look for rolling, uh, the rolling will give you a very different answers altogether because rolling will actually help you to understand what is the range of the one year return which you are back testing and you can actually you know test that out yourself that the higher the range uh, higher the range and the volatility the better the fund based on the xrr it will generate and also a positive tilt can be considered in that format and you can also consider this distribution so the better the distribution in the positives the better possibility is the uh, fund can back test the better xirr and if you want to test that you can actually test it by just clicking on monthly SIP. And if you just, you know, type in any date randomly and run the SIPs, you will find some funds such as PGIM, SBI, Motilal, Kotak as, you know, backtesting a better XIRR. Why is that? Because these funds are quite volatile based on the rolling analysis of any particular window. So even if you choose a 780 or, you know, a 1300, you will see these funds are actively, you know, very volatile in that particular range. So that's how you can, you know, check out rolling analysis, but rolling analysis doesn't give you an answer for like a monthly SIP. You cannot do monthly SIP rolling analysis because it involves, uh, you know, investment for every single month rather than every day.
Uh, Pankit sir, yes, uh, one of our associate will call you uh, and we will fix up a training with you uh, based on the topic we had had a discussion with and we will also listen to your feedback as uh, you know, uh, as your uh, voice is not audible in the session today, uh, we will definitely uh, be in touch with you. So uh, we, we have actually taken down your number and one of us will actually uh, contact you. Are there any other questions? So is there, there, there's another question. Is there a way to add some qualitative parameters while analyzing portfolios like ROE? Uh, yes, we have to check that out with our team uh, that if there is a way, uh, we can give you an answer, a, a very clear, crystal clear answer once I, I can investigate into this. Uh, so definitely we can try to add some uh, good functions which will be helpful for you uh, to analyze portfolios altogether. So once that is done, we can update you. Uh, so there is a peer comparisons uh, segment already for large and mid cap uh, to, to see the peer comparison. There are two ways. One is uh, uh, the way to check into is category averages. Now what, how you can do the peer comparison here is that this is already a category average, uh, you know, altogether. Now here you can click on, uh, let's say focused funds and you can actually see these are the focus focused funds and these are the parameters based on those you know focused uh, funds so you can actually compare certain parameters for focused funds and compare it with the average this is the average of the you know focused fund sebi classification average this is one way another way is that if you have found such a fund which is you know uh, interesting towards which you are interested towards you can just type in that fund particularly and load in the analytics and click on the peers analysis so peers analysis is a better way to actually compare, you know, certain mid caps. So you can actually see that if the selections you have made for this particular fund is actually making sense or not. So based on the SEBI classification average, we definitely have a better stop ratio, but based on the classification in SEBI for all the mid caps, do we have a good sharp ratio? That is a question. So we, we are having certain funds which are having a better sharp ratio. So are we having a, uh, you know, a good, uh, a good enough fund to actually, uh, you know, uh, suggest to our client's portfolio is the question. And you can actually view it here in the peer analysis. Sure, sir, Pankaj sir, we will, uh, our team will contact you uh, for the initial uh, training session uh, so that we can have a, a look into, you know, every queries you have. Uh, secondly, uh, Abhinav sir has another question, the PE and PV that we see on our engine platform and various other website, the PE and PVs are different. How do we procure the data? Okay, sir, so, uh, so we can actually show you, you know, how do we, uh, you know, uh, show this data particularly. Uh, in a uh, in a separate training session with you so one of our team uh, will call you up and will give you uh, we, we can fix a time and a slot where we can talk about a certain queries of yours where you can uh, you know address them okay so for, for principal mid cap fund uh, we will i will take a look into uh, this in evening uh, uh, for the principal mid cap and there is another one baroda bnp so these both are actually uh, not updated in the system as of now, but uh, sooner, uh, sooner uh, we will be updating these funds accordingly. Uh, and we will uh, update uh, in, in, into the updates that we have updated the system.
we got your uh, feedback sir uh, we will definitely look into certain prof uh, topics which will actually help you in using the platform better okay are there any other questions as i can see there there aren't any other questions so we can wrap up this session for today and uh, we will definitely meet up again in the next week with a new topic and uh, we will discuss uh, thoroughly for that topic and if you have any queries you can uh, we will address them into the ne next session and uh, some of uh, some of the you has actually uh, you know requested for a separate training so our team will contact you and we will have a separate session with you so that we can address all your queries and uh, we can give you the feedback on those queries as well so thank you so much uh, everyone and uh, i i recommend you and i request